All right, hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I got a really funny video for you guys. So this is how you're gonna carry games as glass cannon heroes, okay? If you're a glass cannon carry, this is what you need to do. We're gonna be watching from minute 10 to minute 20. Gonna be a very short video. I'm gonna keep it pretty brief. Just go over the important points, and then I'll let you go on your merry way. You can play some pubs, hopefully win a couple games, all right? What are we gonna be looking at? This is someone on my friends list. Honestly, I forget who it is. I deeply apologize, and maybe you're gonna unfriend me now that I've made a video calling you out for your gameplay, but hopefully it makes you a better player, and hopefully it makes everyone else who plays carry who's watching this video, a better player. So we're gonna be watching Drought. What is the most important factor about Drought? This hero scales obscenely well. You go to the mid to late game, this hero shreds, especially with the buff to Glacier. And I'm not just saying that. You might be like, really, the shard? Is that really what makes this hero scale? Yeah, because now if you're on the Glacier, which lasts eight seconds, very, very long, also, it, it, it buffs the E, and it gives you 200 bonus attack range. This shard is really broken, and it gives you vision. If you're on the, the hill, your ulti cannot get broken. And so if I show you guys the change log, all you need to see right here is in 7.34, which was actually a long time ago. Now it grants unrestructed movement within the glacier ice shard radius, but most importantly, marksmanship is no longer disabled within the ramp radius. So if you're on the ramp, your ulti keeps going. The old way of countering Drow was to get on top of her, which is still kind of the case, but with a shard, it's not that hard. You just need the scale. If you can get to minute 2530 with multiple items, you will shred, especially with how good Butterfly is on this hero you can shred. So I really do believe it in Drought. I believe the hero, the scaling of this hero is unbelievable. All you need to do is play safe. If you're playing a hero like the other heroes like that are like this, Lena carry, Sniper carry, Arc Warden carry, a hero that's very popular. All of these heroes, these glass cannon range heroes, just play defensive, hate your timing, and carry the game. This is how I want you to think. Luna, that's probably the best example, right? All of these heroes play the exact same way, basically, with, with small variation. So watching this game, okay, He's owning. There's 7k ahead at minute 11. This, this game is like over. It's like over. He takes the tier one tower. Okay, a little risky. Gets the tower. He has dragon lance at least. Okay, gonna farm up this camp. Fine. Let's look at the map. Pudge and Wraith King are top. You gotta feel a little bit iffy. The invoker and the A are showing bottom. Things are okay. He's gonna farm up this jungle rotation. I like that he starts farming to the right. Want to know why? Because you should start farming to the ancients. Okay, and by the way, this is a legend game. I don't think I mentioned that before. Very important note. This is Legend 2, a Legend 2 player. So he starts farming to the right. I like this. Get out of the lane. No more lane creeps. We want to farm mid-wave when it comes into the tower because it's close to the Ancients, and then we want to farm Ancients. That's it. Nothing else. There's no other good rotation on Drought. That's not true. There is, depending on the game, but that is the most safe and consistent one. The problem is he goes back top, and this is something a lot of players would do. It makes sense. That's my lane. There's a wave pushing in. Pudge is showing mid. The problem is only Pudge is showing mid. You don't know where Invoker is. You don't know where Slark is. You don't know where AA is. There's no real way you can feel safe. They could literally be hitting the portal on AA and Slark and he's dead. So he pushes out the wave. Okay, he gets away with it. He gets away with it. The Wraith King shows. Uh-oh, Wraith King's on my right. He's pushing up. And this is where it just becomes a nightmare. You're pushing up. Why? You should just be farming Ancients. Like, you're going to explode on XP and net worth by farming Ancients. Ancients give the most XP. Ancients plus lane creep, right? Which, you, you know, even this would be better to farm this because you have this ward and this ward. No vision. At least you'd have vision and then the ancients to back up to. This is not safe to back up to, nor is this. The ancients are safe because there's tier one and tier one. The mid tier one is super far away from this. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the dead lane. Of course, this has been a concept for forever. But this is super the case. Something you have to remember. I know this is something you heard from a long time ago, but you need reminders. You got to get out of this lane. Okay, he ends up TPing out. Invoker's here. Okay, Invoker's here. They see him, but he ends up TPing out. Super risky. TPs to the safe lane. The Pudge shows. So we see the Pudge now. Surely you get out. He stays and dies. I mean, you just can't die to this. There's nothing else to say. You cannot die to this. You literally know they're here. They missed the hook somehow. Even Slark is here now. Literally like their whole team minus AA is here. Who also throws an AA blast. <laughs> and he dies. Not surprisingly, he dies. You need to learn from this. You have to learn from this and go hit Ancients. What does he do? Actually, he TB's bottom and farms Ancients. Good. And he coos up an Agatum Scepter. Personally, I think Ags on Drought is incredibly overrated. Reason why is it doesn't really reduce regen on a lot of heroes. Like a lot of heroes just don't care. Obviously it depends on matchups. Some games it's really good. It like does some burst damage, but it doesn't really let you fight in a lot of games. It's good for farming because the E explodes the creeps, but this hero already farms fast. E is already good for farming. 
So I personally think it's overkill. I think items like Mansa, Hurricane Pike, and BKB, as well as Shadow Blade, mobility and defensive items enable the ulti. You don't really need like this crazy explosion AOE damage. It, the reach introduction is good some games, but it's overkill in a lot of games. It doesn't let you fight, okay? It certainly doesn't let you fight. Like this Blade of Alacrity is not a good fighting item, of course. Hurricane Pike, finishing Manta, gives you some options. Buying a BKB, that would be a major timing that, love, that would let you fight. But even then, you wouldn't want to fight pre the BKB unless your team is getting gone on and you're cleaning up. This is how you have to look at Glass Cannon Heroes. I will fight if I am cleaning up. Other than that, I'm playing the game to carry at minute 25 to 30. Maybe minute 21 if I'm giga 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 farm, which he is this game. Uh, but yeah, he could farm the right, right side ancients. Kill it, it will respawn, kill it again. Ancient rotation, beautiful. Mwah. You'll be very far, high level. But instead, makes this risky play to go bottom. He takes this camp, which isn't the end of the world. It will actually stack, you can farm it again. It's like semi-efficient, especially if the axe wasn't here, you could clear the wave and back up. A little risky, but okay, he has some wards in the area, it's fine. But you can't feel safe here. You can't feel safe because Viper and CM are not in the area. Now CM ends up shifting over, but she's not here yet. And all you see on the map is the Wraith King. That's it. You always have to assume, guys, if you don't see them, that they could be there. This is like, yes, there's exceptions to this. And there's ways to know that, okay, I don't see them, but they're not here. But in general, just make the safe play on these glass cannon heroes. Don't take risk. That's not how you carry the game on average. And so he ends up hitting the tower. You can imagine what happens. Well, the Pudge ends up having a blink. I'm sure you didn't know, but either way, it's not safe. Pudge could have TP'd and hooked them. You know, like this just, it's not safe no matter what. He ends up getting exploded by an AA blast and a pudge hook and an invoker comes from the side and you feel bad because now your timing is once again delayed. And this goes from a game that could be over in 20 minutes to a game that actually lasts 43 minutes. In the last 43 minutes, obviously partially due to the fact that his team is pushing him to do this, but due to the fact that he does it. Um, and that's why when you're playing these glass cannon carries and you're off to a good start or you're off to a bad start, you do the same thing. You hit your major timing. What is that? It's your defensive item. On Luna, it's BKB. On Drow, it's Manta, BKB, or Pike, or maybe Shadowblade. And you can show up to the fight if you're cleaning up. This fight would look really good if the Blade Mel Vanguard Axe got gone on, and then he shreds this zero defensive item punch with one point in flesh heat, which he would. He would look very powerful. And then Drow would look like a good hero. But then again, he TP's top. There's no vision top. There's no wards top. You can't see anything. Your whole team is bottom. Ancients are way more efficient. This isn't even good. It's not even a good farming route like Pat. It's inefficient. It's dangerous. This is like literally the worst of every world. And so you might be like, how is this guy legend? Blah, blah, blah. Because I know people are thinking that. Like people always comment that. The loudest people who comment on our videos are always like, I can't believe this guy's legend. I can't believe it. I would never do this. It's like, sure, but this guy like destroyed his lane and has very good CS relative to the people around him. Like he dumpstered his lane and he executed it well and he bought like ample regen and the right items and he, he really did a lot of things correct that i'm not pointing out you know this is obviously um me me being as critical as possible i'm not focused on the good things but like, point being is people do some things well and some things wrong um i just want to make sure if you guys play this archetype of hero you have one idea in mind and that's hitting your mid game timing and if you're going to fight Make sure it is close to a tower or you are cleaning up the fight. He dies again and he ends up buying a ward and like, yeah, I don't know what he's thinking, but maybe it's like, oh, I don't have vision. But the reality is, is you know, I don't know if he's thinking this, but he buys a ward. He doesn't really need this ward. He literally has the trifecta of death in the bot lane and his tier one's alive. Like, you, I mean, you could place a ward on this hill, but that's not going to keep you alive probably if they smoke at you. Really, your vision from your supports is fine. As long as you're not top. <laughs> you know, it's... I feel like that's pretty hard to argue against here. Uh, but yeah, he slows down the pace of the game. He finally hits this farming route, which is what he should be doing. Uh, his TP is on cooldown, which is not great, because if he has TP, he can maybe show up to this mid fight. And this would look good, because now it's a fight where he could clean up. That's what I've been talking about. These are the fights you want to show up to. And he ends up TPing in here. It's a little bit late. Okay, so he wasn't needed, but that's the right idea. What he did there is exactly what you should do. If you rinse repeat that this game, this game would be 15k lead. They could Roche and end the game. And yeah, I, I just hate this Axe because it's like, if he just buys the items that let you fight right now, which is uh, BKB Pike, he could just fight. But instead, he still can just insta-eye to Pudge AA or Invoker AA. Or like if Wraith King has Blink, he could die. 
Okay, ratings, gig agree. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I just thought that this would be really, really useful for a lot of you guys. Uh, very straight to, straight to the point video. Easy to understand. Easy to execute on. And I swear, if you do what I'm telling you in this video, no matter how, how your lane goes, if you're like low MMR, if you're any MMR, you'll have way more success on this archetype of hero. But okay, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hit him up. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.